Mm. Oh, morning. Oh, it looks like a lovely day. Mm, let's get out of bed and go see what's going on in the world. Ah. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow. <gasps> I know, I'll check on how my last project video did for theatre studies. Let's see. Oh. <gasps> Hi, Luke. You win from Oscar. The Oscar. Oscar goes to and the Oscar goes to and the Oscar goes and the Oscar goes and the Oscar goes to Luke O'Dell Everybody want to know what I would do if I didn't win I guess we'll never know What moustache? It had all been a dream. I sat there wondering for a while what could have been the Oscars, the success. But then I thought, what should come next? I thought long and hard, but then I remembered it was on the Google Drive. Hangmen is a play by British-Irish playwright Martin McDonough and had its world premiere in September 2015 at the Royal Court Theatre. It has been universally acclaimed by theatre critics and been nominated for many awards. Martin McDonough was born to Irish parents but lived in London for most of his life. He's been writing plays since the 90s but is perhaps most well known for his film that he directed three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. He also wrote the play 
the Beauty Queen of Lenain, which some of you will remember was recently performed at the Chichester Theatre. But this play, Hangmen, what is it? And what is it about? The play begins in a 1963 prologue, showing British executioner Harry Wade at work with his assistant Sid, hanging a man called Hennessy, who goes to his grave proclaiming his innocence of the crime of kidnapping and killing a woman on the beach. The play then flashes forward to 1965 in Oldham in Northern England, just after hanging's been abolished. The action centers around Harry, who we discover is, was the second best hangman in the land. Harry owns a pub that he also lives above with his wife, Alice, and his 15-year-old daughter, Shirley, whose friend had been sent to a mental institute and she wants to go visit. Harry is contending with the abolition of hanging in Britain, whilst the pub is filled with local customers and mates who are known as the cronies as well as a journalist who is trying to interview Harry about abolition. Despite continually protesting that he has nothing to say on the record, however, Harry is easily manipulated in a funny scene where he ends up giving him an extensive interview, complete with the number of hangings he did and disparaging remarks about the number one hangman in England, named Pierpoint who he says has hair that smells like death and stale brill cream. A smiling but menacing southern stranger named Mooney comes to the pub and stirs up some trouble, causing concern among Harry and his cronies. Mooney inquires if there are any rooms about to let, and Alice offers him a room upstairs. But when Alice tries to call Mooney's references, Mooney explodes in anger and leaves. Mooney also creepily flirts with Harry's daughter Shirley, who he says he can take to see her friend in the mental hospital, and that they can go to the beach. She later goes, and then goes missing. Over the next day or so, Harry's old assistant, Sid, comes back and says he met a very strange man with the same description as Mooney, who showed him potential pictures that suggest he could be responsible for the crime we learned about in the opening scene where a woman died on the beach. However, we then learn that Mooney is in cahoots with Sid, as Sid wants to get back at Harry, who fired him as his assistant, when Sid made a joke about the size of a man's penis who he had hanged. Although, it still remains unclear if Mooney is or isn't the original murderer, as he goes on to say more creepy things to Sid. Mooney eventually goes back to Harry's pub, still somewhat insinuating that he has done something to Shirley. Mooney's taunting eventually pushes Harry and his cronies to put a noose around Mooney's neck and stand him up on a chair to force him to reveal Shirley's whereabouts. Suddenly, Pierpoint, the best hangman in England, storms into the bar to confront Harry about the disparaging remarks he had made about Pierpoint in the paper in a funny scene where Harry and his crew are forced to hide the now choking Mooney behind a curtain whilst he makes everyone smell his hair. However, during the scene, the chair Mooney has stood on topples over and you realise he is being hung behind the curtain whilst this is all going on. Eventually, when Pierpoint leaves, Harry and company discover that Mooney is dead behind the curtain. Suddenly, Shirley returns to the bar completely unharmed, saying that Mooney had actually taken her to see her friend and that they had slept together and she was in love with him. Without seeing the body, Shirley is ushered away to go eat some pudding by her mum, Alice. The play ends with all the cronies who have been there the whole time, just heading off very casually, like this could be a regular old evening, and Harry and Sid are left to deal with the body, although Harry asks Sid to do it as he thinks he may have pulled a muscle hanging him. They also discuss the original hanging, and whether this now means that one of them probably did it, or both of them, 
or possibly neither of them. Innocent, we hung an innocent man, didn't we? Hanged an innocent man. Hanged an innocent man. No, we didn't hang an innocent man. It's just hard to come across as funny, isn't it? When you're surrounded by stupid thicks, I've always found anyway. That said, although I appreciate the good sense of humour, I don't actually come across as funny myself. Oh, I think... Shush, even when I try to be funny, <laughs> I come across more as menacing. On one last note, we're going to have a quick look at the scene where Harry is being interviewed for his local paper. So how many men have you hanged, Harry? I pride myself on never having deigned that question with an answer, Derek, and I shall stick to that deigning. More than a hundred? Loads more. More than a thousand? Don't be daft, this isn't China. It would be great for the paper if you gave me a number, Harry. How many have you done, all in all? I won't, lad. I have no comment. The low 200s? The higher. The low 300s? You were closer the first time. Mid 200s. But I'll leave it at that. The mid 200s. 233. Sans. One German. Nice. Although... They do say that Pierre Point's run into the early 600s. Who says? Pierre Point's wife. Bollocks. And his hair smelled. And whose hair smelled? Pierre Point's hair smelled. Oh, they don't mention that in the papers, do they? Well, what did it smell of? When I were in a mood, I'd say it smelled of death. But it would probably just brill cream. Hmm. Stale. Real cream. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about the play, please refer to our easy to follow plot art available on the online store. <laughs>